However, Errata, in the previous couple of lectures, we analyzed first order circuits. Okay, in the first order circuit, if you remember, we have a capacitor or inductor. Okay, and there are a bunch of other elements which doesn't affect the order of the system, such as like resistors, independent or dependent sources. Okay, in second order circuits, we will have two energy storage elements. It can be two like uh, capacitors, two inductors. They should be independent or one inductor and one capacitor. Okay, so let's uh, analyze a simple RLC circuit, which is a parallel LC circuit. We have the resistor, inductor, and capacitor. Okay, so in this circuit, as you can see, there is no voltage or current source. So it is a like homogeneous or unforced circuit. So we need to analyze it from a perspective of inner shape condition response. Okay, so let's label the currents first and try to uh, obtain the uh, necessary differential equations. Okay. So first of all, let's label IR, IL, and IC. And uh, in this uh, case, I will try to find an ODE uh, where my independent variable is the inductor current IL. And let's assume that IL is equal to simply I. OK. We can also draw a different order on the differential equation where the uh, dependent variable is the capacitor voltage. We can even use, uh, for example, resistor current. OK. So. The, these are independent variables, and we can use different kind of uh, combinations uh, when uh, drawing the uh, differential equations. Okay, so it's given that V R is equal to V L. It's equal to V C because they are parallel, and let's call it V. Okay, and we know that I R plus I L plus I C is equal to zero because of the Kirchhoff's current law. Okay, so let's uh, expand this equation. I R is equal to V divided by R. That's great. I L is equal to simple I because it's the main variable we want to find the ODE. And I C is equal to C times D V over D T is equal to zero. OK, so I can use a different notation, which is shorter. OK, let's call it V dot. OK, V dot. OK, so and if you don't know, D over DT, V is equal to V dot. OK, so this is like a simpler notation for uh, time derivative. And if we have second order, then it is the V double dot. OK, very good. So that's nice, but we don't want V. We want I. So we also we need to replace V with a uh, I, and we know that VC is equal to V, and it is equal to, uh, no, okay, sorry, so VL, that's great, is equal to V, and it's equal to L times DI over DT, because of the inductor current, DI over DT, so technically it is equal to L times I dot, okay, so if I find that, so, L divided by R I dot plus I plus L C I double dot because we have another derivative is equal to zero. So if I organize it, I will see that I double dot plus okay uh, one over R C I dot plus one over L C I is equal to zero. We put the ODE in a standard form. Let's look at the result. It should be the same. As you can see, it is the same. Now we have a second order differential equation, which looks very familiar if you are uh, taking the differential equations course. OK, good. So what are we going to do is, in order to analyze and solve this differential equation, we will put in a different standard form. OK, so okay, we have I. and Let's assume that uh, in a standard form, we have y as the independent variable, and y is not important here. So our goal is putting this into the standard form. Okay, good. So I know that uh, i is mapped to y, which is not uh, important, but we have other coefficients, such as omega naught and alpha. Okay, so if I compute omega naught from this equation, I will obtain that this is equal to 1 over lc, and omega naught is called natural or resonant frequency. OK, if you look at different books, uh, textbooks, omega naught can be replaced with omega n, which is called uh, natural uh, frequency of the differential equation, which is technically the same. Okay. Uh, also, we have alpha, uh, which is called attenuation coefficient or napper frequency. And for this circuit, alpha is equal to square root of 1 over 2 rc. OK, and depending on the alpha and omega naught, 
we will have different behaviors in the annals of differential equations. Okay, good. So, what are we going to do? Uh, in order to solve ODE, what you need to do is you need to find a characteristic equation. Okay, uh, for this equation, characteristic equation is simply this s square plus 2 alpha s plus omega none is equal to zero. Characteristic equation is a polynomial, uh, which is a second order polynomial. Of course, we have second order ODE. Okay, uh, and uh, what we need to do is we need to solve this characteristic equation, which is here. Okay, so we have two poles because second order, uh, which is equal to minus alpha plus minus square root of alpha square minus omega square. Okay, so depending on the relation between alpha and omega naught, we have three different good characteristics. Okay, so what can be? Alpha can be greater than omega zero. In this case, we have two real roots. Alpha can be equal to omega zero, and in this case, this will be equal to zero. We have two double roots. Okay, omega zero is equal to double root. So one double root, of course. Or alpha can be less than omega zero, and in this case, this will be complex, and we will have two complex conjugate roots. Okay, let's analyze these cases one by one. Okay, that's great. Good. So t, these two distinct real roots. Alpha is greater than omega zero. We have s1 and s2, where s1 is not equal to s2. Okay, so we know that it is the case. So in this case, we need to write a homogeneous equation format, which is equal to c1 e to the power s1 t plus c2 e to the power s2 t. We already compute s1 s2. Okay, so we know the form. What we need to do is we need to compute c1 and c2. How? This is an unforced response, so there is no input. So what we need to compute is uh, using the initial conditions on the capacitor and inductor, and we, need, we may need more, I will talk about later in an example, compute C1 and C2, and we are done. What we can do is we can finally uh, plot the graph. Okay, so for a C1, C2 combination, uh, output can look like this. Okay, so it can start from initial condition, and as time goes to infinity, it will exponentially approach to zero. And at some point, yt will be equal to zero, of course, because under steady state condition, everything will go to zero if there is no input in the system. Okay, so depending on the C2 and C1, you can get different responses, especially when t is close to zero or time is close to zero. So it can be something like this. Okay, or it can be something like this. It's also possible, but uh, no matter what happens, we, uh, initially, after some time, it will be dominated with the slowest pole, which has the like largest time scale, and it will look like a first order exponential decaying behavior. Okay, good. So this is uh, what you need to know at this point of the course. Okay, good. Now let's look at another case, okay, where alpha is equal to zero, S1 and S2 is real, but they are equal to each other, S1 is equal to S2 is equal to S, and uh, for this notation, it's equal to minus alpha. Okay, so what are we going to do is, let's write homogeneous equation, C1 e to the power S2, or I can write it like this, C1 e to the power minus alpha T, plus C2, plus C2, e to the power ST, e to the power minus alpha T, but I cannot leave it here, because e to the power ST is equal to e to the power ST. Okay, so it's not bringing anything. So what we do, if you remember from differential equation course, we add a t multiplied to the other basis function. Okay, this is how we can solve a repeated root case in a second order differential equation. Okay, so if we plot the result, and if we compare it to the uh, previous case, okay, uh, we find this. Okay, so I didn't tell, but uh, this case where we have a real double root, okay, two distinct roots, is called Okay, here, overdamped response. So damping is so much that it's kind of slow. It's really related with that. So, okay, so if we have two distinct roots, it's overdamped. If we have double root, it is called critical damped. Okay, good. So depending on C1 and C2, a critical damp behavior can look like this, and this is an overdamped behavior. Okay, so in this example, it's obvious that, as you can see, 
uh, alpha is equal to omega zero case reach the uh, steady state which is zero faster than the overdamped case this is of course true when omega zero is equal to each other but we only change alpha okay so if you keep the natural frequency same if you change the alpha from an overdamp to the critical damp case you will see that uh, the behavior the circuit will reach that state much faster than the overdamp case of course depending on of alpha uh, omega zero if you change to omega zeros it can change and also you should note the fact that uh, the behavior can be quite different when t is close to zero okay for example uh, an overdamped case can look like this, but critical damped case, for example, okay, let's change the color, can look like this. Okay. But we generally compare the behavior after, for example, one uh, time constant or two times constant. Uh, we try to look at how fast the circuits reach the infinity. It's not the, the like the behavior that is close to zero, which can be dominated by the initial conditions. But the behavior as time goes to infinity, critical damped case is always faster than the overdamped case, of course, provided that natural frequencies are the same. Okay, so let's look at the final case, which is called uh, underdamped. Okay, so underdamped response happens when alpha is less than omega zero. So if you look at the original equation, okay, and I'll talk about it later previously, when alpha alpha is Okay, so for that, alpha is less than omega zero. This becomes complex, and we have we will have okay here a complex conjugate group. Okay, and it's called underdamped. And I will let you know what it means when we plot the response. Okay, so S one has two looks like this minus alpha, which is the real part, which is the attenuation factor, plus minus. This is complex. And if we compute it, we can look like this. Minus alpha plus minus j. j is the complex number. And in some books, it can be i. In some books, it can be j. But in electrical engineering, we always use j because we keep i for the current. OK, so j is the complex number. And omega d is called the uh, damped nature frequency, damped frequency, or damped resonant frequency. There are different names. But this is the main frequency uh, that will determine the oscillations in the up. So what oscillations, you may ask? Okay, so in order to find that, we need to find the general solution. Okay, so if you remember from all the classes, once we have a complex conjugate pole, we write the form in this form, C1 plus e to the power minus alpha t, which determines the exponential decaying factor, times cosinus omega d t because it will oscillate because it's under them. There is no enough damping, it will oscillate plus C2 e to the power minus alpha t sine omega d plus t. If you look at the textbooks, you can see different kind of notations. For example, instead of C1, C2, uh, where we have cosine and sine, it can be single cosine, but we can add a phase shift. And I will talk about the phase, what does it mean about the phase shift in the last part of the course. But for now, this is the oral structure. Let's plot it and try to understand what is the output response. Okay, so if we start at critical damped, this is critical, and over damped systems, okay, which shares the same omega naught with the same initial conditions, the output can look like this. Okay, so what is this? So critical damp is the red curve. Uh, under damp uh, response is the uh, blue curve, as you can see, the main difference is this oscillates and this doesn't oscillate. Okay, and it oscillates because we don't have enough damping. But however, if you look, ignore the oscillations, if you just look at the peaks, for example, we have a peak here, we have a peak here, we will have a peak here, uh, the decaying factor is same. It should be same because uh, here the attenuation factor is equal to minus alpha, and if you remember for the critical gamma case, it's also minus alpha. So it's very close to each other, okay? So of course, depending on the initial conditions, you can get different behaviors when t is equal to zero, but the idea is uh, under damp case reaches infinity with the same rate of the critical damp case. So it's not slower, but we will have oscillations, and of course, we generally don't want oscillations in uh, many of the systems for 
some special circuits we want oscillations, uh, such as like uh, oscillatory circuits. But if your idea is to reach uh, to zero or your state as fast as and as smooth as possible, you generally don't want oscillations. For example, we generally call this overshoot because we want to reach zero. We want don't want to go beyond zero because it's really a negative current here, which is unwanted in uh, many different circuits. Uh, and but in the critical time case, it's smooth to reach infinity in the fastest as possible. Okay, this is everything I want to talk about the basics and fundamentals of second order circuits. We will solve some examples to better understand how we can solve problems, how we can analyze second order circuits. And later I will talk about the first response.